Greetings, once again, this is Ravana Noon, and as always, I am representing the Awakening Universal Mind Show, which is on Thursday nights at 9 p.m. on TalkShoe.com. Today's topic is about sorcery, black magic, right-hand path versus left-hand path. Let us begin with the right-hand path versus the left-hand path. Now, essentially, the right-hand path, left-hand path are just terms or definitions utilized for uh, those who submit to something, which is the right-hand path, and those who submit to nothing and take control of their lives, which is the left-hand path. Right, the right hand path is utilized more because that title, the right hand, is the dominant hand that most people are on this planet. Left hand is the least dominant on this planet, so those titles address those uh, meanings or terms or uh, definitions of a path. Essentially, the right hand path seeks to merge oneself their psyche or soul with the objective universe, which is understood as nature, God, the all, absolute, etc. The left-hand path, however, understands that the objective universe is to be nothing more than a mechanized process of creation and destruction and although beneficial to harmonize with, the mystic seeks to separate herself, psyche, soul from it in various ways. Essentially, the, the left-hand path is a conscious effort to realize one's higher self and to bring this self into one's mundane self. And as often as possible, thus coming to know one's true self while incarnate. The right hand path. The right hand path involves the intentional effort to dissolve or merge the self into the objective universe. Right hand path teaches that these two categories are an illusion that in reality the two are identical. The solution is to subordinate the illusion of self awareness of the psyche to the reality of God, nature, etc. The left-hand path involves the conscious attempt to preserve and strengthen one's isolate, psychocentric existence against the objective universe while creating, apprehending, comprehending, and influencing of a, a varying number of subjective universe, the left-hand path is based on individuating oneself against the universe. We believe in a strength of our own isolate will to create change in the objective universe. We look at ourselves as separate independent entities apart from the objective universe. Left-hand path teaches that the two are capable of being perceived as distinct and are in fact Distinct as a result of the existence of the principle of the isolate consciousness. By cultivating and nurturing this intelligence as a separate, unique quality, we develop our own individually determined freedom or liberation. Those on the left-hand path, what are our qualities? The value of the advancement and preservation of the self while seeking to become a divinity or behold oneself as such already. The conviction that individuals can become or already akin to God. There is no such thing as a selfless act. The individual is preeminent. That all decisions should be made with the goal of cultivating the self. Each individual is responsible for his or her own, his or her own happiness. And that no external force will ever provide this. The focus, I mean, excuse me, the forces of the objective universe can be harnessed to one's personal will. Power gained and willed in, in such manner is an aid to enlightenment, to self-satisfaction, and to self-deification. 
Now, this is very important to understand because unfortunately in this society and society at large, many people are content with being a servant or a slave. Many people are submissive to others and they're very controlled. They become sheep, slaughter, cattle being led to the slaughter, sheep being led to the slaughter to the slaughter. They are a herd mentality. They herd together and they follow the majority. They do what the majority says and they think like the majority, never questioning once is this the right thing to do or not to do for my own personal growth or personal benefit. Left hand path looks at oneself and goes within oneself and deals with the shadow or the darkness within oneself. Our objective is to go into our abyss, which is deep within the subconscious mind that has been programmed and conditioned by society, by culture, by religion, and all these institutions that are set up to make you nothing more than a slave. A person on the left-hand path is about controlling themselves. But to do that, we also have a principle of indulgence. Now this may seem shocking to some of y'all because your right hand path mentality, your Puritan mentality, your mentality of a religious nature will not allow you to realize the benefit of indulgence. We're not saying extreme indulgence where you have no control over yourself and lose yourself in that which you are objectifying or desiring. For example, I cannot explain to somebody how good a slice of New York pizza tastes unless I myself have experienced that slice of New York pizza. Then I can break it down for that individual to give them a little wisdom and understanding and knowledge about that slice of pizza, but that individual still has to make a choice to indulge in it to understand what it is all about. And then when that is indulged in, you learn through the experience and you learn to control that desire and give life to it at your will's behest. And your will should be strong enough to say, once in a while, I partake in that and not lose yourself in it and become a person who becomes gluttonous and gorgeous and becomes extremely obese because they have no willpower to control. But we do not in the left hand path believe in not indulging in certain things. When our whole existence is to experience life. Not to. Not to. And I'm going to reiterate this. Not to run from life. Not to hide from life. Not to close our eyes to life. As a Buddhist monk would do going up into the temple because he or she may not want a shot of ass or dick or whatever the fuck gender you are. And going in there and doing my mantras all day. And sitting in a, a room that is essentially like a cell in a prison or a jail. And, man, and doing mantras all day to try to annihilate your human basic desires so left hand path we indulge in that reality and we master that reality so that we become greater through the experience we believe in challenging ourselves daily every day I strive to do something that makes me greater than yesterday. Left hand path, we go into dealing with our pain, trauma, wounds, hurt, desires, perversions, anything is confronted. As that old saying, 
anything that you resist will persist. So we understand that fact. So what we do is we don't resist. We indulge to understand it, gain the experience, and master it to have greater control than somebody who feels like I'm going to chant this away, meditate this away, and then when they get up, they see a fat ass, and everything that they work for meditating for one hour is gone immediately because now all they can think about is that ass because they never experienced it, because they ran from it. They thought they had to be holy, roly, levitate, and do all that. Now, why do I speak about this? Because for years, I was on the right-hand path, many years. More than 15, 20 years I was on the right-hand path. I indulged deeply in the right-hand path and learned every facet you can of the right-hand path. And it served to do nothing but make me a disillusioned person, a delusional person. It made me not deal with the reality of what was within and why I couldn't bring certain benefits or success into my life. But a sorcerer, a black magician, who are on the left-hand path, a part of the left-hand path, we use our power within to affect without. We go within and understand our strengths so that we can address our weaknesses and bring balance to those weaknesses and even strengthen some of those weaknesses to benefit us, not hurt us. So when we deal with the darkness, which 90% of this population run from the darkness due to horror movies, horror films, uh, everything is utilized to make your subconscious afraid of the dark because in the dark you actually will encounter yourself and encounter the things you hide and sweep under the rug, and you will learn to confront it and give life to it to master those things and no longer be subjected to those things. Because your subjective universe has been rearranged, reprogrammed by yourself and deconditioned to do as you will and manifest it in a physical reality. And not as what someone wills you to do. So as a black magician, we use the power of darkness. We don't run from darkness. We love darkness. We are in the darkness of ourselves, in the darkness that we see outside, which is really a shadow form because the sun appears to be shining and reflecting off of the moon, which sends light, which creates shadows here. But when we speak of darkness, we're going beyond a shadow. We're going into that abyss where there is no light. The abyss where all life emanated from, which would be considered to some on the left-hand path, the black sun, which are demon, not demon as in a religious, monstrous, deformity sense, but demon as in our genius higher self, all emanated from that black sun. So when we do works of darkness, we do the works that many are afraid to do. For example, if I want to uh, harness the power of my passion, not run from my passion, but harness the power of my passion because passion is the fuel that pushes you to work towards your uh, your goal your wishes or your dreams to make them a reality i've utilized that passion by creating a ritual that will harness that passion and project it forward so i would take a let's say black candle which absorbs energy and a red candle which activates that energy and I would put them on my altar, one on the left, one on the right. The, right can, the red candle on the right, black candle on the left. And then between those two candles, whatever my 
desire, goal, wish, or dream is, I would put an image in between those two candles. Let Say it is a house that you're seeking, a car that you're seeking, a loved a person you desire or lust for or love. I would put that image there because images go to the hippocampus area of the brain which programs and stores memory and sends it to the subconscious mind as a programming to be utilized later. I would then see this image and fuel my passion do dark, deep breathing. Essentially close my eyes, feel the dark energy, rise the black flame from the kundalini, which some would call the kundalini, from the root chakra upward. And I would bring it to the solar plexus, the fire seat within me, up to my nostrils. Essentially breathe and exhale out through my nose or my mouth and send the passion towards that image visualizing that image the whole time with my eyes closed, opening my eyes to the reality of that image, and then sending that passion towards that, giving life to it, and then affirming what it is I seek. Closing that by saying, it is done. Not so it shall be, so mode it be, it is done. Then afterwards, I leave that alone, because anything after that would be, in essence, me doubting that ritual if I keep my mind focused on that ritual. Let it go and let your fuel, through that passion, manifest into physical reality. What happens, your subconscious mind opens up. You program it and you allow this magnetic energy from your blood to seep out and attract you towards you networking, investors, people you desire. But you have to not just ritualize, you have to do the actual physical work in your everyday reality. You have to be in the right places, right time. You have to put yourself in those situations. Your subconscious mind through the ritual will allow that magnetic attraction to allow those things to happen. You can work with archetypes, but when you work with archetypes, it is not to worship an archetype, because an archetype or a god or goddess is nothing more than a metaphor for things that already exist within yourself, and you utilize these archetypes because of the attributes of that archetype represented within you or you trying to tap into those attributes within yourself and that archetype represents that utilizing that archetypal energy can activate that within yourself it's not about worshiping it's not about praising it's about becoming and embodying the archetypal energy for example set or satuk or soot of ancient Kemet represents the isolated consciousness. The, that isolated consciousness is the consciousness that refuses to conform and follow the majority, but to stand on its own two feet and be the God over self and determine your own destiny. That is the took, set, which is the isolated consciousness, which is why on the left-hand path, many embody or utilize the archetype of Set, Sut, or Satuf. The ancient origins of the left hand path go back to ancient Kemet, Africa, and pinpointed towards Set, Sut, Satuf. So when I walk the left hand path, I understand its origin is ancient Kemetic or African, which is connected to my ancestry as a Puerto Rican or New Rican. Through my lineage, I have a large African contingency, I should say, or DNA that is traced back to Africa. 
which is found within my Puerto Rican culture through the food, the music, the dance, found within the phenotype for physical attributes of our people through the hips for the females, through our noses, things of that nature, hair type, texture, things of that nature. So when I connect back, I'm connecting back to a path of ancient Kemet that was so, so feared that the priesthood of Amun had to try to destroy Sut, Set, or Satuch in its true form and create the slander, the hate, and the gossip towards what would be considered the teachings of Set or Satuch about not conforming, by not worshiping anything, about being that God, and by basically absorbing the energies or attributes of all the gods to be the greatest of gods, as Sut or Satuch or Set is called in the coming forth by day, also known as the ancient Egyptian book of the dead. Not looking at Het, uh, Het Heru, or oh, she's still embodied, of she's the embodiment of love and caring and all that light side of bullshit, but then we don't see the other attribute of Hetero as Sekhmet, the devourer, the passionate one, the anger and the hatred of those who are trying to suppress and control somebody. We don't see that because we want to see the beautiful side of Kemet, the lovely trimmings and paintings and hieroglyphs and metanetters and all this bullshit. But we don't want to see the real side of taking control of your life and being the master over your life because it's easier to submit to something or someone and not be a god over yourself. So as a sorcerer, we take control of our lives and utilize the darkness, which is the undercurrent of this planet which is found in the m duet or the duet or the underworld okay we utilize that energy we utilize chaos because chaos is supreme in the universe although you may not realize it chaos is always eternal you have to create order out of chaos chaos existed before order so that's this is why many do not understand that ma'at is something you create out of your chaos in your life, not some universal order, order in your life out of chaos, but chaos will still be supreme in your life because chaos is necessary for growth. Chaos breaks stagnation in your life. So when that chaos comes, you still will be in the chaos, but will have your former perception of order that you created out of that chaos. It's still supreme. A pep still will be supreme, bringing the chaos. You just have to learn how to tame or control that chaos, which is why you see Set or Satuch controlling a pep. Not Ra, not Heru, not a Set, Satuch, Set, controlling that force or energy of chaos. So as a source or a black magician, we go deep into the darkness and we utilize these things. We learn what black really represents, not pro-black, not black, 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 black power. I walked all those paths for years. I was in those paths. I was a part of the Black Watch movement as X-Clan. When I was at Ohio State University, I became a part of a group known as MAC, Men Acquiring Courage and Knowledge, which is a pro-black group. I became part of the Young Lords, the reinvented Young Lords in the 90s which was a more pro-Puerto Rican nationalistic group. I experienced these extremes. I experienced police brutality by experience, not by interpretation or see what's happening, by personal experience, being brutalized, being profiled, for being strictly just a Puerto Rican, which in the eyes of people up north, a Puerto Rican is nothing more than a light-skinned nigga, as they would like to say, or a mixed nigga, whatever the case. I have experienced all those things, and I realized one thing and one thing only, although you may not like this, as you gain your wisdom, as you gain through studying, you may not like this, you will realize that many of those situations are self-created. 
Not that people being shot and killed is something that I'm negating. It is a tragedy. It is wrong. It is fucked up. However, our mentality, our subconscious minds are creating this reality of police brutality and shootings continuously occurring. Because if your mind is now focused to fear the cops or to be confrontational with the cops, you automatically are setting that up into your life. I have not been stopped by cops in years. And I go into neighborhoods that cops would consider high crime areas. I'm there to help and try to assist and work with people to elevate their consciousness. Still don't get harassed by cops. I don't get pulled over by cops. I don't deal with that because it's not in my reality because I create my own reality. Although you may not like the way this sounds, I create my own reality and I deify myself as the God over my life and it works lovely for me and for many others who are on this left-hand path. It works lovely for us. We don't experience the same things that the majority of society does. We don't go through the thing because we take control of our life or we manifest those things into our reality and we bring it into fruition. So we have to start learning to take control of these things. When you work in sorcery, get yourself black candles, get yourself red candles. That's the two predominant colors we work with in sorcery or black magic or dark magic as one may, may say. Utilize those to your benefit. Learn to use your passion. Use your lust. Use your desires to manifest your goal. It is not evil or wrong, as people may say, because evil is not true. It does not exist. It is a perception that you have on what is right or wrong in your life according to what you want. It does not exist. You can argue, you Bible thumpers, Quranic thumpers, Torah thumpers, or any other religious thumper that wants to come in my face with that. I will easily show you how is your perception. Not a fact. Good and evil is only about perception and is not real. For all those who are beginning your path as a sorcerer, sorceress, witch, witch, uh, whatever witchcraft and things of that nature, I would strongly advise that you begin by studying the seven principles of Tehuti, also known as Toth or Hermes. Study those seven principles and understand them and apply them to your life and you will see why sorcery, witchcraft, things of that nature can work for you. On your altar, you should have a black cloth Harnessing the, the power of darkness. If you choose, have archetypes that represent that dark energy you're working with. Because the deeper or darker you go, the more you awaken and ascend past this human frailty that you have been living. Create a space within your house that is strictly for your ritual for your altar, for these archetypes you put on it, if you choose to have archetypes, or you have symbols that resonate with you. When you get to that level, then you become a master over your life, where eventually you don't need to do rituals or have an altar. You become the altar of the ritual, because you have now ritualized your life so much that you are a walking ritual. You are a walking altar and you manifest those desires, wishes, goals, just by a thought. That's the goal that we all should be trying to reach. So, next time, next class, we will go a little more in depth. If you have any questions, you can reach me by email at Ravana. R-A-V-A-N-A-N-U-N at Outlook.com or you can find me on YouTube as Dark Occultist 99 or Google Plus as Dark Occultist 99.
I don't care if you agree with me. It's irrelevant. That's your perception. I don't care if you like what I say, don't say. It. It's irrelevant to me. That's your perception. But if you want to contact to build so that we can build and grow together, so be it. But if you come with the okie doke, two things will happen. Either you get smashed or you get no response. Because I'm not going to feed to your ego and I'm not going to cater to your ignorance. Once again, you can reach myself at RavannaNoon at Outlook.com or Dark Occultist 99 on YouTube or Dark Occultist 99 on Google Plus. And you can come on our show, Awakening Universal Minds, every Thursday at 9 p.m. on TalkShoe.com. Peace.